The mission of the Inattentive ADHD Coalition is to ensure that children with inattentive ADHD are diagnosed by the age of 8 and that adults with inattentive ADHD receive prompt and accurate diagnosis when seeking help. To learn more about our mission and how you can help, visit iadhd.org. I'm Katherine Ellison. I'm a journalist and author of a few books on ADHD, including the family memoir, A Year of Paying Attention. We're here today with David Boswell, who is an engineer with aerospace. David, you're in Calgary now. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Actually, I'm here in Charleston, South uh-huh. Carolina. I'm working for an aerospace company here. Moving around, I think, is a part of the ADHD trades. Are you Canadian? You don't sound Canadian. No. Born in oh, Chicago, okay. grew up outside of Boston. Already. I would love to know first about when you were diagnosed and why. I was taking graduate courses in aerospace engineering. I was having trouble with something that I should have understood. I go to my doctor and say, kids can get, adults can get ADHD. I've got it. My GP was treating quite a few patients with ADHD. He sent me off to have an assessment. About 15 minutes in to the interview, the psychologist was certain I had ADHD. (laughs) And yet you never had symptoms as a child? You don't remember it being an issue then? It wasn't called ADHD. My problems weren't attributed to ADHD in elementary school and secondary school. Comes back then, yeah. Believe it or not, math. In fifth and sixth grade, had a math teacher who was very rude and taught what to do, not how to do it or why. I was never able to absorb it. It wasn't until graduate school that I figured out, hey, I'm pretty good at this math thing. (laughs) After trying to learn that I didn't know math. You've been so successful that you had no other problems with your ADHD? Oh, oh, always losing my (laughs) keys, crashed five cars, run-ins with the law. We'll have to make a deep dive. (laughs) Broken nose. I was out in left field, literally in Little League, and all of a sudden the coach hit me a line drive and... I caught it with my nose. Oh, gosh. Maybe it was the coach's fault. (laughs) I was spaced out, very inattentive. So it all made sense when you look back, when you finally got this diagnosis and you look back? Oh, yeah. Mm. There's so many things. It also made sense that I would go off when I was 19 and join the Army and say, I'm going to fly helicopters. I was able to hyper-focus through all the testing and flight school Ricker, because it was so challenging, I would get in a state of flow and I was the youngest person. So it almost flopped from that grade school, get out into the real world. And then things started happening. Do you think the structure of the military was good for you? Absolutely. It just made so much sense. They would tell you why to do something give you the challenge and that goal and objective. And then as an ADHD or or I've seen you set up a goal and get locked in on it. And that is going to happen. Period. Yeah. Deadlines for me have always been that way. Hey, channel this ADHD energy towards something productive. And that builds that momentum. And then you're unstoppable. If you can remember where you put your keys. Exactly. And sunglasses and yes. a bunch of other things. Phone. So when your psychologist interviewed you and diagnosed you, what was it that he or she noticed that set off the alarms? Actually, it was even before the first 15 minutes. She started describing what ADHD does or how you experience ADHD. She pointed at the clock. You can hear the clock ticking. You can notice that small sculpture. You see that magazine on the table in front of you. And she's pointing out all these things. And I'm going, 
oh, shiny, <laughs> oh, shiny, oh, shiny. And she's going, yeah. <laughs> like Without even doing the checklist. Huh? She just had that one little test. You probably have ADHD. Let's make sure. I think that's very important to assess properly. Oh, for sure. So when you were a kid, were you also oppositional? Because that seems to be something that goes along with it a lot. And there's problems with the law. I consider myself smart enough to get away with it. And yet you oh, didn't, right? These problems with the law. Just your usual trespassing on construction zones and being where you shouldn't be and getting chased out. Usually it involves skateboarding and skateboarding where there was a sign. No skateboarding here, but we do it anyway. I don't know if that's troubles with the law. That was the most serious, huh? There was the impulsivity and just written off as being adolescent, just growing. It, it seems like a lot of teachers must have not seen your problems when you're in school. Do you wish that they had? Would that have made your life a lot different? I wouldn't put it on the teachers. I would put it on the way education emphasizes getting the correct answer, getting the correct answer quickest. Whoever raises their hand first gets that attention. They're teaching you how to come up with that quick answer. It's useful in school and passing those entrance exams and on game shows. Mm -hmm. Those are the only places they're useful. However, my question is more, when you look back at your childhood, would it have helped you to have been diagnosed early? If I was in elementary school now and diagnosed, I think so. But back then, I would have probably been told and I would have learned that I couldn't be an engineer. I couldn't be an army helicopter pilot. It's because I didn't know oh, I was wow. able to do these things. That's very cool. Yeah. This is a diagnosis. You're diagnosed with ADHD. You're going to have trouble in school. You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to. Nobody really talks about hmm. what you can do with ADHD. What can you do? What do you tell your, your clients about what you can do? What do you think the super strengths are? When you find your passion, what makes you come alive, you can really do things with it. You can do productive and valuable things. Once we're aware of that, we have to be mindful of what really comes from the heart and what makes us come alive. That can guide us much better than what some book says. So it, it means, sounds like you're saying that for a lot of people with ADHD, we are more enthusiastic when we find our thing. When we find what we resonate with, we will naturally resonate in a harmonious fashion. There's dissonance mm. and we're not in harmony with it. Chaos and destruction happens. Yeah. So what led you to seek your diagnosis? Were you having some problems that you wanted to check out? Yeah, specifically, I was having a hard time understanding incompressible, irrotational, low-speed aerodynamics. Oh, my. Okay. Of course. Doesn't everybody? You should <laughs> get that easy. What led you to suspect? I, it was an offhand comment to my doctor. Uh -huh. and he was experienced enough and was treating adults with ADHD, so he didn't dismiss it. Because you thought the reason that you couldn't understand that thing because, because of some kind of cognitive thing, that was what you were asking your doctor? Oh, no, I wasn't actually going for help specifically for that because I was beating myself up and all the self-recrimination and all those internal voices and the anxiety, I'm a bad person, I can't get this. All those things were just there, but they've been there my whole life. Okay. And That's so what I wanted to know. Yeah. I've used impulsivity to break through that. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. So I say, whatever. I'm going to try again. Do you think your doctor had noticed some kind of symptoms before this? In his conversations, he was quite brusque. 
and he would interrupt Dave, tell me about what we're talking about because I'd go off <laughs> tangents when I talk, just like here. here. I think you're doing and a great job. <laughs> Maybe I can go far afield, so please interrupt. Okay, I will try to do that more. That's a very interesting answer. It sounds like you do not wish that you'd been diagnosed at an early age because not thinking that you had a disability has freed you to really chase your dreams. Oh, you just touched a hot button. They've <laughs> called ADHD. It's, it's a disorder. Okay. Okay. It's a neurological development disorder. Definitely. We're so not lacking anything. We yep. just have less control over executive functioning. We can pay attention just like anybody. Yeah. Yes. We have to be motivated. I definitely agree with that. If someone can't see the board in class, you give them glasses and then they can see. Yeah. It wasn't like they were blind. That's the disability. Mm -hmm. You are not able to see. Mm -hmm. You just can't see so well. You get some glasses and now you can focus. That's what ADHD meds do for me. I, I take my glasses on, in the form of a pill and right. now I can focus. I think the reason I called it a disability is because it is like many psychiatric things, a kind of a spectrum. So you have people that don't have your genius because it doesn't correlate to intelligence. For a lot of people, it can be disabling. I think that the low self-esteem that you can have by having that label could mm -hmm. also be disabling. But the condition itself, I don't think meds solve everything for everybody. No, they don't. Pills don't yeah. teach skills. You have to put in the work just like everybody else. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, it doesn't really matter how smart you are to be successful. Yes, I've seen many cases of that. <laughs> so when did you decide to become a therapist or a coach? I listened to David Quirk founder of AD Coach Academy, and read his book, Permission to Proceed. That opened the door for it. It's great. It's great. Just that I called you a therapist and not a coach. <laughs> but Oh, no, are, are you beating yourself up to that? Yeah, it, it's totally. I can't concentrate. Okay. But you still operate. You've got your goal here. Right, exactly. And, My goal is not bring you down on a couple of things. Yes. <laughs> One is... So how much time are you spending being a coach and how much time are you spending being an engineer? I recently started a job, so I kicked my clients to the curb. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, definitely. At the right time, there is a point in time where a coach needs to say, hey, okay. we've reached our goals. You need to go out there on your own. You feel so proud of them, and yet it's I'm going to miss them. Oh, <laughs> no. but then were you looking for a job? What gives you more pleasure, the coach or the engineer? I'm ADHD. Everything. So it's everything. <laughs> I have to do that. I have to. I also tutor and teach and mentor young adults, both in high school and college, who are looking to go into engineering. And some of them have ADHD, too. It's usually the ones with ADHD that come up and say, hey, I really like this stuff. And it's, okay, cool. Let's get it out. I think there's that sense of giving back is very important to me. I find that so rewarding. It really helps when you can distill what you've learned and pass it on, right? Because what you've learned the hard way. So what are some of the best things that you tell people? What's your best advice to, when you're coaching? Have there been any strategies that you've picked up along the way that really help? Strategies. I have to go into coach mode here. First one is developing attitude towards what the world has told you before. In other words, you've got ADHD. And the reason why you came to that conclusion was all these negative things. Then we explore how ADHD has helped the person. and. Then all of a sudden, they find out what they resonate with. ADHD automatically helps. It helps when you do something that you're really jazzed about. By the time you're in high school, you know 
what you're truly passionate about. But primary and secondary school don't develop passion. It's not geared towards that. It's geared towards getting you to pass that exam. Did you talk to a lot of people who just were having trouble finding what would be that passion for them? Or you helped them figure it out? Yeah. Yes. And it's almost too easy because they already know it. I'm just shining a flashlight. And they go, hey, look at that. What's this? And they go, oh. Then instead of letting it fall by the wayside, because you have to be an adult and be responsible, instead of letting it fall by the wayside, set up that mission, set up those goals, set up those objectives. All of a sudden, the world looks different, the client, a, a world of possibility, not a world of how do I manage this ADHD? Tell me what to do. Strategies. Yeah. Nag, make sure <laughs> I'm on time. That creates a sense of dependency, and you're always seeing that coach. But it's so, great parenting advice, too, because so many kids, by the time even they're in grade school, they're getting a lot of negative feedback. If they can find something that they're good at and just do a lot of that, they get great feedback, and that's just a lifelong benefit. It's also identifying the transferable skills. You look at the transferable skills. What kind of video games do you like? What role do you like to play? What kind of adventures do you like to go on? In there is that key to what makes them come alive. How did you uh, find your passion for engineering? How did you discover that? My parents were pretty cool about me taking a park everything in the house. If something was broken or they're throwing something out, they go, here, David, you can take it apart. I would tear it apart. I put it back together again and it would work. Uh -huh. I was already being an engineer. I was a helicopter pilot in my twenties already. Wow. And I'm going, Hey, an aerospace engineer, I can make these helicopters. <laughs> wow. I can learn how to do this. I made model airplanes, I still do, and I'm always fascinated with flight. And that has been a thread through my life too. And that's what I find out with my clients. I had one client that had the robot that was in a cartoon that really made him come alive. And this is an engineer that owns his own firm, mm -hmm. completely adult, professional. I made him go and find that robot for hmm. him to remind him that this is why you became an engineer. Nice. David, you've got to have passion and the ADHD people maybe naturally have more of it directed towards a goal. Did you pick up any really good strategies for handling your own ADHD? Oh, yeah. Well, one was uh, meditation. Uh, if I focus and contemplate the goal and envision it, I can make it happen. And later on, I found affirmations where you write it in the present tense of who you are. That creates that vision in your head. Your ADHD comes along and says, hey, that sounds like a good thing to do. Let's do it. And you're thinking about it all the time. Yeah, that's Don't interesting. Don't have to motivate yourself. Yeah. It's interesting talking to you because you're so all over positive about ADHD, which I think can also be a, a hardship. When I ask you about strategy, I'm wondering if you were forgetful, do you have any methods that keep you on track? Do you have a very organized wife or assistant? How do you do it? So organizational strategies is neat enough, organized enough. Rather than I'm going to organize everything right now, that just doesn't Interesting. work Interesting. So avoid perfectionism it is, is it's a good strategy, right? Asking those questions, is that working for me? Is this right. planner working for me? Is yeah. this method working for me? I bought a smartwatch because I can set up alarms, mm -hmm. whereas my phone, it's sitting somewhere else and I lose it. If I have this on my wrist, yeah. uh, I'll remember things. 
Last question. What is your job now? I'm working for a very large airplane manufacturer. Which, okay. And yeah. what are you doing specifically? I'm a senior level engineer and I'm involved with the design, manufacture, and delivery of aircraft. This is all the way to conceptual design, to delivering it to the customer, to include flight tests, the stress analysis, all those, and how the production and scheduling to bring it all together. It's quite a non-linear, very complex system of systems. The non-linear brain of ADHD -er can really rock in mm -hmm. this type of situation because I don't have to go step by step to get to a solution. Because you're visualizing things at a glance. Do you think that's it or the creativity to? All of it. Yeah. All that ADHD brain that goes, hey, we can do this. An ADHD brain doesn't necessarily filter out and disqualify certain methods. We're not going to be narrow minded yeah. thinking that one solution is the right one. We're always going to be open. To other solution. Did you have to read a lot to find this positive take on ADHD? Because after you got diagnosed, was that upsetting for you or was it, how did you feel emotionally about it? Oh, it was great. It was like somebody turned off the radio, the television, the vacuum cleaner. Do you start taking meds, right? After yeah. you took meds. Yeah. 15 minutes in. It well, was cool. <laughs> I wish they did that for me. This is what normal people have to deal with. Oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> my mom and dad worked in the emergency room. My dad was an emergency doctor and my mom was an emergency nurse. Looking at their living space and their careers, they were probably ADHD too. <laughs> that caused all your usual familiar stress and dysfunction. Not coming from necessarily the nicest place, uh, but it got to that point where it's like, screw it. I'm going to go fly helicopters. I got to the point in my life where it was just screw it. <laughs> I still have all those dark thoughts, all those dark voices, all those things saying that I'm a piece of shit in my head. It's coming from, is that coming from your busy parents or is that coming from... Having ADHD and messing up a lot. I think the presence of ADHD and the impairment of those executive functions led to the decay, chaos, destruction, neglect, all of that. And you have to face it. That is the most important part. You have to face the darkness and integrate it into your life too. One of the things I did to be able to deal with the darkness was volunteer for a crisis hotline. That's a, what got you to the place where you could say F it. Because if you were managing your ADHD in this chaotic home life situation, did you have a mentor or what inspired you to be able to take charge of your life like that at 19? I attribute it to a guy named Miles Gaddy. He was my boss at a bicycle shop. I was very negative, full of lament. Back then you were a punk rocker. So there was some style to it. And he goes, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Nice. I go, I want to fly airplanes. <laughs> and he goes, we'll go do it. Oh, nice. I couldn't come up with any excuses there and go do it. It was the right time at the right place. And it just resonated. Go do it. Okay, I can do that. And I figured it out. I've had plenty of failures in my life, and I know how to handle failures. When you were I, actually told that you had ADHD, what was your emotion? The psychiatrist told me that once you're diagnosed, you'll be always diagnosed with ADHD. This doesn't come off your record. And I'm going, yeah, I'm sure. I had already read through cover to cover, all in one setting, driven to distraction. I was absolutely certain. Because you suspected you had ADHD before you even talked to your GP, right? No, it was by the time 
they had done the assessment and came oh. up with the report, they said, oh, here's this book, Driven to Distraction. You'll learn about ADHD. I went through every page. That's me. That's, me. <laughs> that's when it hit. But it was much later when I had these ADHD-based coping mechanisms. I wouldn't be impulsive and say, yeah, I wouldn't be impulsive. I think we just, oh, no. Oh. Problems started to arise after I was diagnosed because, because I developed these coping skills using my ADHD traits and being medicated, I wouldn't be assertive. I would be patient. I would be more cooperative. That got me into trouble. I got into situations where I had so much responsibility, I was burning out. I couldn't say no like I could when I wasn't medicated. Interesting. Wow. I've never heard of that before. But I, overall, was it a benefit to take the meds? It sounds like initially it came into focus, but you feel like it changed your personality. I did less uh, army aggressive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And anger issues. I, definitely toned down that impulsivity, the emotional ability. Those are two things that I get a lot of benefits still from meds. Medication definitely helped hmm. me keep that even keel. I think we have to wrap it up now, but really appreciate your time. I think that there were some really interesting answers. Thank you. <laughs> this has been fun. This has been a production of Inattentive ADHD Coalition. Check us out at iadhd.org and see how you can help us by donating or by spreading awareness about inattentive ADHD. Thank you.